Hey there guys, so we're back in Max and we're going to sort out what went wrong with our Forge Master. So let's go ahead and load up our last document which we saved. Should be everything all pieced together and all in one piece, minus the apron and such of course. So let's see what happened, let's just go ahead and first of all just fix this apron because it was a little bit too far back and we had the chest clipping through it. Let's make sure that's moved into a good enough position so that it encompasses the rest of the body with as little clipping as we can afford. Uh, so we might just need to adjust the front of that. So I'm going to click on polygon selection and just going to select the polygons at the front here and drag them forward slightly. So it adds a bit more thickness to this area. And I think I might just select the ones at the back as well. It's going to go to my lasso selection tool. So where you've got the cube at the top, the rectangle, go ahead and hold the left mouse button down and select the lasso tool. And we'll select these polys here. And we're just going to move the whole set forwards, just so we've got a bit of a negative space behind it. And that'll make sure that nothing clips through. And the rest is down to the riggers. So let's just do the same here. I think we can afford to move this forward a little bit more. There we go. So now we shouldn't have anything clipping through. Alrighty, so um, f what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to apply a UV, unwrap UVW modifier. I'm going to open this up, open up the UV map, and we'll see here that we have the shells for the tools and things down the bottom. So I'm going to go to uh, tools and do render UVW template. I'm going to render that out at 1496 so it's just easier to overlay over our current, current uh, textures. And this is what we get. This is the, the UV layout. So I'm just going to go and click save in the top left corner. And from here, I'm just going to drop this into my working folder, drop it into my texture bakes, and I'm just going to do UV underscore uh, accessories, save it as a JPEG, and that's going to enable us to easily texture the rest of our tools and see where everything is. I'm going to close that down, and now I'm just going to select the upper body. Now, everything's still joined together here, but we still have our material IDs. So if you recall, we had a little bit of an issue with our charm on the left hand, and also our, if we just right click and press hide unselected, we had an issue with our belt buckle as well. So let's just go ahead and click on the belt buckle with the polygon selection mode active. Down here we'll still have our material ID set up, so it knows that this is material ID 2, the upper torso. If we press select ID here, that will select everything with that uh, assigned to it. And from there we can put a UVW modifier on here. And it's only going to show up the UV maps for the material ID which we have selected. So press UV editor and that will bring everything up here. And let's see what went wrong. So we can see down here, this is where we have our belt buckle. And for some reason, it didn't bake out correctly. So in here we have a few more of the uh, the rivets and things. And these are the charms on the arm, uh, on the gloves. So what we're going to do is, for the charms on the gloves, I'm going to select these. And I'm going to move them a little bit further to the left hand side. And we're going to have a go at doing our own uh, creation of normal maps. So I'm just going to space them out a little bit better. And in fact, I'm going to move them over to the other side where we've got a little bit more room. So I'm just going to select these, drag them over here, and just going to move these around so they've got a little bit more space. So this one is the I think that's the that's the top face of the one on the left. So let's pop that there. We have the bottom face for the one on the left. I'm going to leave that underneath here. 
we have the top face of the one on our right, so I'm going to put that there, and the bottom face for it, which is there. We also have the uh, the sides of both of them, so I'm just going to move this down, pop them underneath, doesn't matter which one's which at this point, um, and we're going to paint our own normal maps and textures onto here, so there we go, so there's the charms. And let's just move these a little bit further back. These are the rivets. Let's just move them up because I know this area is full of that metal texture, so that'll do absolutely fine. And the metal texture which we have down here is to do with the belt buckle. So what we're going to do is just manually create our textures for this. I'm going to lay these out so we've got a bit more space. I'm going to give the belt buckle a bit more resolution as well. So let's just scale that up a bit. Okay. Let's just move that up so it's not quite so close to the glove. And we'll move that a little bit further over here as well. So a good thing to do would be to figure out which way is up. So if we go ahead and click on the center here, we can see that this slice which we have selected is this part here. And ideally, we'd like to be able to tell which way is up. So let's select the entire thing, rotate it around. So we need to rotate a little bit further. And a little bit more. until the polygon at the top is actually the one that's at the top, if you see what I mean. So we can tell which way we're painting this. Again there, another couple of turns. Okay, so it looks like this is mirrored, which is possibly what caused one of the issues when baking, so Yeah, so that's mirrored. So I'm selecting this. Um, I'm selecting this part on the left. I know that's right. Yep, ignore me. I'm just going crazy. And that's the back. So I'm just going to shrink this down because we're not going to see the back of the belt buckle. So that doesn't matter too much. And that's going to allow us to give a bit more resolution to the front of the belt buckle. That's good. And so here we can tell which way is up. So this is going to be the top part of the belt buckle here and the bottom part. So if we're going to draw a wolf's head on here, we can quite easily, uh, you know, tell which way is the top and the bottom of the wolf head. So for the charms, I'm going to do a similar sort of thing. These are going to be the tops. We're not going to see the underside, so I'm going to give them a little bit more resolution. Hopefully I should be able to fit both of them on there. And again, we want to be able to tell which way is which. So let's go over here. And select one of the faces. So this needs to be rotated anti-clockwise a bit. A bit more. Getting there. So that's the most upright part. So we need to make sure that this section is right at the top there. So we can tell which way is up and down again. Doesn't matter about the underside. Let's go over to the left hand glove charm. And do the same here. So let's go ahead and rotate this around. Okay, so it needs to go 180 degrees. Or thereabouts. 
and that's the one right at the top there so let's just move that back a little bit further in so it's not quite at the edge of the UV map let's move these down okay so what this is going to enable us to do is to paint on here and we're going to use crazy bump to uh, create our normal maps if you like using endo you can use that as well but I've got a license for crazy bump and I don't have a license for endo so yep that'll do it so we have our belt buckle there we have the ba uh, back of the belt buckle and the sides of it so let's go ahead and go to tools and we'll do render UV template We'll set that to 4096 and 4096. Do render UV template and save. And we'll do UV upper body. Helps if I actually type UV. And we'll save that as a JPEG. Save. Might as well set the quality to best, that's fine. And there we go. So that's our model finished off, tidied up. There's nothing left for us to do with the model here. So we're just going to fix up the rest of the textures. So let's just go ahead and just delete that UVW map. We don't need it anymore. Let's um, go ahead and just make sure we still have our material applied, which we do. So we have our four materials. We have the head, the upper torso, there we go, everything fine there. Let's just go ahead and re-export this, unhide all. And we'll select everything here. And one thing that I'd like to do is just to get him set in the right position so he's going to be standing on the floor. So I'm going to move him up and I'm going to go over to his the left hand view inside Max. And I'm going to use the arrows the gizmo controls in here just to lift him up off the floor a little bit so his boots are actually flat on the floor and here we just want to set the pivot point to the center so let's go to um, hierarchy click on effect pivot point only and do align to world nope sorry not align to world we'll just uh, type in zero 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 and that's going to set the pivot point for everything as the center. So everything is now a little bit off the ground. Eh, still needs a little bit of tweaking. Let's just set this each individual section at 0, 0, 0. That's fine. And that's fine. So each of the chunks are done. So let's export that as an uh, FBX now. Just select the whole thing, go to File, Export, Export Selected, and I'm just going to navigate to my Projects folder in here because it's quicker than doing it through Max. And we're just going to overwrite our other FBX file. Save that, press Yes. Everything else is fine, just press OK. Alrighty, so that's everything done here. Before we leave Max, I'm going to save this as a final Max file. So I'm going to go back to my root directory for the Forge Master, and I'm going to create a folder called Max Final, and rename the file to Forge Master underscore Final, and press Save. And now what I'm going to do here is because I'd like to do a turntable inside of Marmoset and do a bit more lighting and things inside there because we've got a few more things which are, are great for portfolio work inside Marmoset Toolbag. Um, thing is it doesn't recognize material IDs, it recognizes mesh chunks. So we're going to divide this up into the mesh chunks. And we do that just in the same way you know, that we'd expect really. So we're going to select the head. Uh, we'll go down to where we've got our material ID. Just click on select ID we'll press detach and we'll call that forge underscore head we'll select the upper body press select ID for material ID 2 and detach that and we'll call that forge upper torso okay 
And next we'll select, uh, we've got the trousers, that's pretty much the only other part left, so that's the lower torso and that's fine as it is. So let's um, just rename this to forge lower torso. And then we have our accessories which are here. Let's just collapse this UV map down on there. Yep. We have the big hammer as a separate object. Did we have that as a separate object in Unity? Yeah, that's fine. So keep that separate. It'll just use the same texture, which is probably a good thing anyway. But then we have the apron, which is fine, and then the hammer. So now this is all divided up into sections. These uh, these vertices are no longer attached to the others, and they're all separate chunks. Um, this is fine for using Marmoset for doing uh, you know beauty renders and things like that. But I wouldn't recommend it for games um, unless you really have to, like you have head switching and stuff like that. But it's all down to the riggers, really. So then we're going to uh, select this, the whole thing. We're going to export and export selected. And we're going to create an OBJ folder in our final folder. And that OBJ is going to be for Marmoset. So let's just go ahead and just call it Forge Master underscore final and save and export and done and that's going to be everything all sorted so I just want to actually double check my export settings did I have save yes okay so the materials aren't exporting that's fine but we do have our texture coordinates and everything else so that's all good we're going to save this as a separate max file and we're going to call that underscore marmoset and save. And hey presto, we're done inside of Max. So let's jump back into Photoshop and we'll figure out what went wrong with our textures and we'll uh, finish off fixing things up a little bit. Okay, so back in Photoshop, we're just going to go to open and we're going to bring in our upper body and hold down control and bring in the accessories press open so from here we're going to be able to overlay um, our UV coordinates and things so uh, what we're going to do first of all is just going to start a new layer on the uh, over the DM category going to go to open, going to go into uh, Forge Master working texture bakes and I'm actually going to open up both the upper body and the accessory UVs. I'm going to do control A to select all the upper body ones. Go to my upper body and paste that in. And I'm going to set this to this layer to screen mode so I can see the wireframes. And there we go. So we have our wireframes over there. Now you can see that pretty much all this is all over the place. So what we're going to do here is uh, do the same. We're going to go to our accessories. We're going to do Control A, Control C, Control V, and we're going to do screen. Now we didn't have the hammer selected, so we're not going to get UV layouts for the hammer, but that isn't important. We don't need them. And what we're going to do first of all is just paint in the accessories for our ha uh, things like the hammer and the pliers and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and move this to the correct layer first of all. Let's move that down to the diffuse map layer and turn off the normal maps. I'm going to create a new layer over the top of here and I'm going to try and remember which bits which. So this is the head of the hammer. This is one of the pliers. That is, not sure what that is. I think it's the other side of the pliers. Yeah. So the two pliers there. I think that's going to be another section of the hammer. So, and that's going to be wood. So what we're going to do here, bring in a few textures to help us along. 
So I'm just going to bring up my textures folder. Bring this over. And we're going to bring up some wood. So some rough wood will do. Something like... Yeah, something like this will do okay. So I'm going to open that up inside Photoshop. Just going to drop that in at the top. Control A, Control C. And I'm going to paste that in here. So I'm going to transform that down to make it smaller because it's a bit large. Hold down shift to make sure that the the uh, image doesn't get warped. I'm going to rotate that around and I'm going to drop that here where we have basically our the handle for our hammer. And squash that down. There we go. There we are. So these are the cylinders, which are sort of the the nuts, nuts and bolts uh, for the pliers. So we don't want wood on there. There we go. So we now have a wooden handle for our hammer. Cool. That's good. And let's go ahead and get a metal head on the hammer. Let's go back to my metal folder. Okay, so let's grab a metal texture. I'm going to grab this bronze statue one because it's, it's beat up. It's got an interesting surface. I'm just going to select an area of that and copy it. Let's head back to our accessories and paste that in. Obviously, it's huge. So, it's going to drop that in and zoom out. It's going to hit Control T to transform it. Shrink it down a bit. Might even use this for a lot of the plier details as well. So, I'm just going to make it larger so it covers the areas for the pliers. And there we go. Alrighty, so let's just zoom in and erase the areas we don't want. Now, obviously, we don't want it interfering with our wood, so I'm just going to drag a selection around the wood. A bit difficult to see with this background, but there we go. Drag that around there. We have the sort of uh, central part of the cylinders which go between here, so we'll have that selected with metal as well. Hold down Shift, select everything that we want to be covered with metal. I'm actually just going to deselect around the uh, around the wooden section of the hammer. Yeah, let's just start there again. Just going to draw around the sections that I actually want to be metal. I think we'll have the pliers be metal as well. Head of the hammer, of course. It's the whole reason we brought this in. There we go. Got the rest of the pliers down here. There we go. Alrighty, so let's just do Control Shift and I and press Delete. Oh, looks like I forgot to. Let's just undo that and select around these barrels. Uh, Control Shift I and Delete. Oh, looks like I forgot to undo it one more time. And make that selection. Let's just undo. There we go. Make that selection. Control Shift I to invert and then delete. And there we go. Let's just affect the, uh, the levels of these because it's a little bit on the, the bright side. So let's just go on to uh, levels. Just going to bring down the amount of white output. And just going to slide everything a little bit more towards the darker colors.
There we go. I'm going to give a slight blur to everything. So let's just go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. A bit too much. Let's just bring that down. That'll do it. Okay, so. Cool, so we have um, our accessories all painted in there, so that's going to work out fine for us. Got no other changes that I want to make here. So let's go ahead and turn off the. Uh, let's just turn off the. What's it? The uh, UV map layout. And we'll save this as PNG. And we'll just overwrite our accessories file. Press save. Yes. Okay. And once this is saved up. Sorry, once, once this is saved up, uh, what we're going to do is um, create a height map for these sections, uh, just a grayscale height map. I'm going to use um, Crazy Bump to create a normal map for it, so we'll still get some surface detail on there, which will be quite nice for us. So, to do that, first of all, we're just going to turn off everything else that we have here. So we have nothing else visible. We're then going to go up to the top here and select our topmost layer in this, this category. Hold Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And I'm going to create a new folder outside of here and call it HM for height map. And I'm going to drag this into the height map folder so that we don't accidentally affect anything in, in the displacement map. From here, we're going to go and do a high pass filter on this. So if we go to filter, other, and then do high pass, if I just bring the controls over from this other screen, what this will do is, well, first of all, we need to desaturate it. So go to image adjustments and then desaturate to make it grayscale. Then go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all of the high and low frequencies. Going because when we grayscale it, uh, we're still going to have color information in here. So some of the darker colors are going to show up as black, and some of the lighter color colors are going to show up as white. Doing a high pass filter, um, basically, it it really kind of finds the actual height value. It's not particularly accurate, um, but it does give a more uniform appearance so we don't end up with color information affecting everything. So I'm going to just set that up like so and press OK. I'm then going to save as and I'm going to use this as a PNG. And we're just going to call it temp underscore height, height rather. Press OK to save it out. And I'm going to bring in um, Crazy Bump to play with. And I'll just bring it over to this screen so we can see it. Now Crazy Bump is fantastic. You can take lots of different types of information. If we press the open button, we can take a height map from a file. And let's just go ahead and find what it is we want to do. So let's go ahead and go to Tutorials, Forge Master, Final Textures, and we want to choose uh, temp underscore height, press open. When we open that up, it's going to make a normal map out of what we have selected here. It does have a preview window as well, which I'm going to bring over. So it will give us a 3D preview window and it will show us the results of the height map uh, being turned into a normal map. So it's given us a bit of surface detail. What I want to do though is I want to turn down the large detail and the very large detail and that's going to reduce the uh, 
the intensity of the edges that are on there. I'm going to play with the medium detail until it's not really raised up off the surface any longer and all we're left with is the texture itself. So we can turn down the fine detail and turn up the very fine detail. And we're left with something which is more just a general texture than you know anything representative. So that's going to do us absolutely fine. We can turn up the fine detail even more and turn the general fine detail down. And turn the intensity down as well so it's not quite so over the top. So it'll be quite subtle. And there we go. So I'm just going to hit save and then say save normals to file. I'm going to save it as a PNG and that's going to put it as temp underscore height underscore NRM. I'm going to hit save and come back to Photoshop. It's going to bring that in, just go to file and open and we're going to open up that temporary height map, a normal map there. Going to do select all, edit, copy, going to go to our accessories. We can turn the height map layer off, turn the normals on, and from here we can go edit, paste, and just going to zoom in, going to turn the opacity of this layer down a bit. As you can see, we get a little bit close to the apron, so I want to make sure that we don't affect the apron itself. So select the area we want, press Control, Shift and I, and then delete. If we zoom in a little bit further, we can just tidy up that extra edge, which was encroaching upon our apron. And there we go, we have a, a semi-effective normal map, which will just give us a nice surface on there. So that's going to do quite well, I think. And we have our final normal map for that section. So I'm going to save that out and I'm going to overwrite the Forge Accessories normal map and press save. So now we've done that you can kind of get an idea of how we're going to sculpt the uh, the wolf head kind of buckle. I'm just going to basically paint a height map for it in black and white. Uh, you could use a photo if you wanted to. I'm just going to do a rough paint of it. I'm not going to do too much for it. Let's just let that save up. Take its time, there we go. And we can do file and save because we're done with that for now. So let's just close down anything we don't need up here. Let's close that. Okay, so these are the charms on the gloves. So that's the right hand and that well, our right, his left hand, and our left and his right hand. So I can't remember the symbols that we had on there. I think is the symbols for fire and water. So fire on his right hand, water on his left. So we're going to create a new layer in our dis uh, diffuse map file uh, folder. I'm going to select around here. and around here as well just because just in case we end up spilling over and things okay so what we want to do here is add a layer of medium grey so I'm going to bring up my colour swatch and use the paint bucket tool and just going to go over here and get 50% grey if it's possible. So that's going to be 128, 128, 128. There we go. In the RGB values, that's medium grey. And just fill that selected area. So, what I want to do now is start building up a, a, a height map basically. So I'm going to select my paintbrush and I'm going to make the edges hard 
I'm going to grab a black and I'm just going to look up the symbols that I use because I can't remember what they look like. Okay, so the rune for fire or torch, which I suppose is close enough, is basically an arrow pointing left, and then water is sort of half an arrow pointing upwards. Let's just get that out of the way. So on his right hand, I want the symbol for fire. So I'm going to hold down shift and just drag this up. And from the top, I'm just going to, I don't know, this is fire, isn't it? I'm just going to undo that. Let's just click, hold down shift and click again. Got uh, opacity on. I'm actually just going to draw this by hand because it will look a whole lot more convincing. So it'll be wobbly anyway. There we go. Let's just tidy up the edges. Select the grey colour and just harden them up a bit. Add a point. That'll do it. So that's good enough for fire. So select the black again and we'll do the symbol for water. It's going to drag up and bring that down. Again, just grab the grey and sort of create a point. Okay, so what I want to do now is just going to select these areas. And then I'm going to apply a blur to it, so I'll give a bit of a um, a gradient, only a very slight blur. There we go. That's all good. So that's going to give us our uh, our height map. Okay, so we've got the height map there. I'm actually going to create another folder called HM and I'm gonna move I'm gonna move this UV layer all the way up to the top so it's outside of the group and drop the this layer into HM so we're not going to affect anything in the uh, diffuse map fol folder and then we're going to I think we'll leave that as it is I think we'll add a little bit of texture to it so to do that I'm going to once again grab a metal texture. Just going to bring that in over here. You can find it. There we go. Metal. Something not too over the top. So, no. Let's try something a bit more bronzy. Yeah, we'll just use this one again because it gave good results last time. So let's just right click, open with Photoshop. I'll open that up here for us. Just going to select an area. And do edit, copy, edit, paste. And with this layer, I'm going to go to layer and create clipping mask. So it only applies to this area. I'm then going to uh, press Control and T, just so I can position this, just to affect the scale. There we go. So it's mostly just surface detail that we want. We're then going to grayscale this, so desaturate. We're going to bring the levels down again. away some of the highlights. We're not going to do a high pass on this one, but we are going to go on to normal and press overlay. We might even actually do a high pass on it. Let's see what happens. Let's go on to filter, other, high pass, and let's just put in a few more of the, the lower frequency details. Press OK. So that's going to give us our height map. I might even take the brightness down a little bit because it's going to be a little bit over the top, I think. Decrease the contrast. There we go. 
So now we have our engraved marks and we have our surface detail there, which is going to come out quite nicely. Now I'm going to create my uh, diffuse color as well. I'm just going to turn off the UV map for now because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to create a new layer over the top and once again make that layer a clipping mask. I'm just going to select my paintbrush and just soften the edges a bit. And from here, I'm going to create. Uh, I think I'm going to put it on soft light. I'm going to bring up my color menu, and I want to get sort of a bronzy color, so I'm going to go for sort of a, a deep orange. And just paint over here. Going to mix in a few colours just to add a bit more interest to it. Maybe a bit of yellow. That's no, too bright. It's desaturated a bit. It's going to create another layer in between these two and drag it over the top so I don't have to just create another clipping mask, it'll automatically do it for me. And I'm going to further enhance that with like a, a darker orange, closer to red. Switch this to soft light. And now I can just add a bit of burnishing or something to it. Just to really enhance that a bit more. Only very softly. Don't like to stand out that much. Okay, so now we have our color map. I'm just going to turn off the... Uh, the diffuse layer and turn off the background layer as well. I'm just going to do Control, Alt, Shift and E and I'm going to drag that down to our diffuse layer. Turn off the height map for now and you see that's joined, joined us here. So now we have our diffuse texture. So that's going to be the color texture which we see and let's just turn that off now and turn the height map back on. We can just get rid of these layers, don't need them anymore. And we have our height map. So continue to work on the height maps only. We're going to do this wolf head. I'm going to select down the bottom here. Anything to do with the, the belt, uh, belt buckle. I'm going to create another layer and fill that with a medium grey. So 128, 128, 128. And there we go. And on here, I'm going to start creating a grayscale shape. So I'm going to get the ellipse tool. I'm going to create a new layer over the top and I'm going to drag out a circle uh, an ellipse rather hold down shift to get a circle to appear I'm going to right click and press transform selection and then I can get that centered on the UV and press OK on there so what I want to do here is kind of create a bit of a gradient so it looks like it's uh, like a raised section around the outside. So let's go ahead and try doing that. I'm going to select the paint bucket tool, run a new layer, so we're not going to affect the one below it. I'm going to choose the same grey and fill it. And then I'm going to go to adjustments and go to brightness and I'm going to reduce the brightness of it. So something about like that. And yeah, that'll do fine. So I'm going to deselect that. And then I'm going to go double click on the actual layer itself and get some layer effects. I'm going to go on uh, inner glow. And I'm going to set the inner glow to normal mode. I'm going to set the colour to a grey. 
and increase the size. Sorry, I need it a slightly lighter grey. But not as light as the outside, so something like that would be okay. Going to increase the choke. So now we have a bit of a gradient with a slight hard edge. I might actually choose a I'm going to choose the same colour actually. There we go. And that's going to sort of give us this <clears throat> almost like a ramp. I'm going to change the opacity down slightly. It's going to give us a, a ramp which is going to indicate to crazy bumps that this uh, section here is at an angle. So that's going to work OK. Just click OK on there. And now we want to create the wolf head itself. So I'm creating a new layer. I'm going to ch turn the opacity down of the UV map just because it's a bit distracting. Then I'm going to select my paintbrush. I'm going to harden up the edge. And I'm going to bring it up to the same height. I'm going to change the opacity down a bit so I've got a bit more control. And I'm going to just paint this in. So if we use the same value as this on the outside, it means it's the same height as it. So this is going to be embossed. It's going to rough in the shape of a wolf head, which kind of mimics what we did in ZBrush. Not quite as accurate because it's a bit easier to do that inside a ZBrush, but we'll work it out. I'm going to get a slightly lighter grey now. isn't quite going as I expected. It's a little bit harder than I thought it'd be actually. Just going to mark in where the eyes are. Select the lower grey to do that. This is one way of doing this. I think I'll show you another way as well, which uses ZBrush, and I think it might be a little bit better for it. Let's um, see how well this comes out first. the darker grain, we'll put the lower jaw in. Yeah, I think that's starting to look okay. Let's just get a slightly lighter grey as well to indicate a higher surface. Let's put the nose in.
Yeah, I think that's going to do actually. That'll be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to use the smudge tool a bit just to smooth this out a bit more. Fade into the background. So it's a bit primitive, but it should look all right when it comes out. Kind of adds to the character, I think, so that's fine. Cool, so we have the height map of the wolf there. Let's go ahead and take the bronze again. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste it from the other one. So let's go up here. Let's... Um, just copy this. So control C and paste. Oops. So that the move tool will get this moved down here. Let's pop that over the top of our, our wolf head. And control T will stretch that over. And we'll set this to. I'm just going to turn that layer off for now. I'm just going to collapse these down. So that's the background. I'm going to collapse that to the background. Collapse that to the background. Turn that back on and do layer create clipping mask. And I'm going to set this to soft light. Nope. Uh, multiply. Nope. I think soft light will do it. I'll just turn the opacity down. And I'm just going to duplicate this and put it over the top. And I'm going to do multiply on there. We'll soft light again. So I'm not sure how well this is going to come out, but I'm going to create a flattened layer with everything there. Oops. Just going to undo that, turn off the UV, Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And just going to select this. And then I'm going to go to Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and increase the contrast on there. So it's not going to look as good as it did as if, if it came out from ZBrush. And normally I'd spend a lot more time on this, but. Uh, I'm really running out of time to get this tutorial done, so I've got to get a move on. So we have our height map. Let's go ahead and convert this to a normal map. I'm just going to save that as a PNG, and I'm just going to once again call it temp height map and save. Yes, okay. Let's go ahead and bring a Crazy Bump back up. I'm going to go open, open height map from file. Open up temp height, okay. Alrighty, so not too bad. Let's just go ahead and turn the very large detail down. Turn the medium detail down. Fine detail down a bit. That's going to give us more of a, a craggy outline. Always turn the intensity up, which I think is what we want to do. So that'll do okay. Let's just take a look at the other section. So that's going to look pretty cool. So we'll do save. Save normals to file. That will overwrite our other one. Let's head back to Photoshop and go open. We'll open up our temp height map normal. Control A, Control C. Drop that in. We'll put that in the normal category. Let's find out where it was. There it is. 
let's just turn the opacity down turn the UV map on turn the opacity of that back up so I can see where everything is and now we can just select things we don't want so let's just select around the edges and we'll do the same up here just hold down shift to select multiple areas if you didn't know that shape you do by now but there we go select this layer control shift I and delete and there we go so we have our normal map let's turn the opacity of that back up So not the best in the world, but it's going to be detail which wasn't there originally. And let's just go ahead and colorize our belt buckle as well. Let's turn off the normals. Go back down to HN. And then we'll just colorize this. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to make that a clipping mask. I'm going to turn off the other layers underneath it. Oh, let's turn that off first of all. Pop that over here. There we go. That looks like we've got to have everything turned on. Forgot how my layers are working. There we go. Let's just create a clipping mask. I'm going to set that to soft light. And just going to select a bronze color. We did the last time. And softly paint over that. It's going to create another layer over the top. Set that to your overlay. Add a bit more colour to it. I think that'll do. So now I'm just going to turn off the background layer. That probably wasn't a good idea. I'm just going to turn the opacity up of this, get a bit more texture in it. Turn off the background layer and do Control Shift Alt and E. So I need to select the layer at the top there, Control Shift Alt and E. And I'm just going to select this section because that's all that I want. So I'm just going to select this area. I'm going to do copy. I'm going to go down to my diffuse map. And here I'm just going to do Control Shift V to paste that in place. Looks like we've got a bit of overlap somehow. Just delete that. Make sure we've got plenty of gap there. And there we go. Okay, so we have the texture up there, we've got the texture down here. And I think we're just going to modify this a little bit more. I'm just going to go to image adjustments brightness and contrast, or the levels rather. Oops, deselect, otherwise I'm not going to be able to affect anything. There we go. Okay, so let's just double check the normal map. Make sure I didn't get any overlap here. Nope, that's good. No overlaps there. Cool. Let's turn off the UV maps and do save as. Go to PNG. This will be his. Da -da -da, that's his upper body. So upper body normal. Save and yes. Let's get that saved up. Let's 
It shouldn't take a second. No, take more than a second. There we go. Let's do the diffuse map. Save as PNG and upper body underscore DM. Save that. Just going to pause it while that saves. And there we go. So we'll do file save and save our PSD file. So what I want to do now is um, create our specular maps. So I'm going to take a look at what that looks like inside Unity just to make sure everything works first of all. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we're back in Unity and we just need to switch out our FBX for the new one. So let's just delete the guy from here. We'll delete our FBX from our Forge Master folder and just import the new one. Let's go to Final, FBX, Forge Master and Import. Set the scale to 1 and we'll turn off import blend shapes or we'll import the normals, that's all fine yep, import materials from models material and apply and we'll drag him into the scene it's going to scale him up notice he's scaling up from his feet now because our pivot point is set correctly uh, still need to sit him on the ground but uh, it's better than it was Let's just go ahead and set these position coordinates as 0, 0, 0. And go join them over there in the center of our scene. And just increase the scale of him a little bit more. Okay, so uh, let's go to our textures folder. And we need to pretty much re import everything except for the head. So I'm going to set the accessories. Uh, select the, the lower body because we fixed up the belt as well. So let's just delete everything here. Going to import, let's just have a check on these textures. Let's just import the accessories and let's turn the quality up and apply. There we go, let's just import the normal maps. And we'll set that to normal map, turn off grayscale, turn up an isotropic, and set that. And there we go, we actually have textured tools there. Let's go ahead and bring in our upper body. So, again, that's a texture. Set everything to high quality. Of course, when this would go into game, we'd probably set these textures to like maybe 1024 or 2048 if uh, the detail was needed. And we'll go upper body normal map. Set to normal, turn off the grayscale option. There we go. And finally, the lower body. Trilinear. 4096. And apply. And then one last bit for the lower body normal map. Normal map, turn off the grayscale. And there we go. Alrighty, so we have everything in. Everything's looking nice and clean. The belt is all fixed up. We don't have anything. Uh, I've got a little bit of spill over there, but that's absolutely fine. The apron is no longer clipping with his chest. Everything has texture, except for that little bit there, but again, I'm not bothered about that. I can always just extend the texture out. Seems like our charms weren't working. Did I actually save that out correctly? 
I don't think I exported the FBX, did I? Let's just hop back into Max and load up our final scene. Let's just collapse that. Press yes. Let's just select the upper body. Select ID. Unwrap UVW and open UV editor. And we forgot to do that. That's annoying. That's really annoying. How did I forget to do that? What's the point? What did I do? Okay. Well, there's a way to fix it, thankfully. So, um, what we're going to do here is just reorganize the UVs. It's going to open this up and go uh, pick texture. And it's going to load up a, a menu here. I'm going to select bitmap. And I'm going to go to my projects folder. And there we go. And I'm going to select my Forge Master, my final textures. And I'm going to load in the upper body. So now I can just fix the UV maps here. So you can see this needs sorting out. Let's just do that. Let's just right click and press hide unselected. It's gone to polygon selection mode and grab this. Let's find out where the top is. Okay, so that one needs to be vertical. Right there. Cool. Let's move this over here. So it's pretty much centered. And I'm going to change the scale of this up. To take that into account. That'll do it. Just going to move the back of this over. It's not important. So let's just plop that down there. Reduce the scale of it. And we'll move this section over. Okay, let's do the same for the charms. So the charms are over this side. Let's just move these over. So even if we do screw up, this is how we fix it. Um, once the textures are done, you can still play with the UV maps. And sometimes it can be a bit easier to get them in place. So that's the back, that's the front. Let's see if we can find the central one. So that's the center. And that one needs to be pointed upwards. So let's just rotate that around so it is. We'll then move this into position over the water, water logo there. Scout that up. I believe that's the back. Yep. Let's just place that underneath. Uh, which one's over this side? That's the top. Which one's the center? That's the center. So that needs to come around here, like so. We'll move that over there. Oops. That's still the right one. Yep. So it's still the right way up. Let's just scale this up. There we go. Move that into place. And we'll do these edges as well. So this will enable us to make sure everything's all tidy and finished. So don't have any of these rivets just in random places where we have black showing through on them. Just going to move move this over. So this is where we ended up with the black sections. Let's 
Let's reorganize these. There we go. Alrighty, so that's everything in the right place. Let's prevent ourselves from screwing that up again. Just collapse that down. Press yes. Okay, so let's unhide all. It's going to select everything again. And go file, export, selected. And we're going to export that as the FBX. Autodesk FBX from the drop down menu. Save, yes, and replace. So just to make sure the uh, the marmoset OBJ that we'll be using is all right as well, we're just going to redo that. So let's just select the polygons. We'll select everything with the material ID of one and press detach, and we'll call that forge underscore head and OK. We'll set everything material ID 2, detach, and forge underscore uh, upper torso. Okay. We have the lower body, which is, you know, forge lower torso. And then we have the big hammer and we have the accessories cool okay so this is our detached one which we're then going to save as sorry export selected as an OBJ for Marmoset so there we go and yes export and done Cool. So I'm just going to undo that and join everything back up again. So I think that's everything joined. I'm just going to check the UV map as well, make sure that's still right. So that's still one solid object. Let's make sure the UV map is still right. I hope I didn't undo that. Don't think I did. Yep, that's all good. So let's just collapse two. Yes. And then we'll do file save as Forge Master Final and save. Okay, so let's get out of Max, get back into Unity. We're going to delete. Da -da -da, going to delete the FBX. And right click and press import new asset. Go to our final folder, go to our FBX and import it. And we're going to set the scale as 1. Once again, turn off import blend shapes and materials by models material and apply. And there we go, that's everything back in play and our texture's working right. It shows up pretty well, I like that. We're going to have textures all over these and no black marks. We have textures on our tools. And we have our other charm over there. And let's just turn his apron off. And not brilliant. Probably the weakest part of it, but I might tweak that a little bit later. But it's good enough. It'll look okay when it's shiny, I think. So let's turn his apron back on. And there we are. So let's, uh, I think we'll call that a day for this chapter. I'm just going to save this scene. Uh, Unity Projects, Forge Master. Just going to save the scene. Yeah, save it inside the assets folder then. There we go. There we are. Okay, so in the next chapter, we're going to get the specular maps painted up and see what he finally looks like with everything in place. So I'll catch you in the next chapter, guys.